Macher is a Gaelic word, means the whole system from the shore all the way up to the moorland. So as far as the sand blows, that's where Macher is. The best quality macher out of the whole lot is the macher we get here in Newest, because it's really only here in Newest that we cultivate the macher the way that we do. Macher land is a calcareous based soil and they're generally free draining, they're relatively fertile and there's, there's a good growing medium. And it's a semi-natural habitat, so it's there because of the management done by crofters over generations. Folk have been lifting seaweed here for, for decades as a basic nutrition source for any growing crop they had. It's also important for wildlife, and even in the middle of winter, maggots can be hatching out as food for the various different wintering birds. You see so many of the birds using these piles to get the insects, the flies, the sandhoppers that are still in with the seaweed. We start ploughing early April. We show what we call coscopic and sometimes a little vibe. Primary crops that are grown here are small oat, so the black oat, rye, and also a variation of beer barley that's kind of from Uist. And the seed has been used here for generations, so it doesn't need any additional fertilizer or herbicides. These crops are accustomed to the growing conditions we have here. They're fairly drought tolerant and they're not too hungry on nutrients. The, the reason for those dates being is that after the 15th of May, you've got a bigger chance of disturbing ground nesting birds. So species like the lapwing, the oyster catcher, ringed plover. If the birds have laid and the nests get damaged once, they will relay. But if each operation happens, say, a week apart, the birds will have relayed in each of these periods of time and then they'll get damaged again and again. Whereas, if all the cultivation activities happen close together, then they'll only get damaged once and they'll happily relay and raise that second brood of chicks. If something happens to their chicks, it's too late in the year for them to, to try again. A typical cropping rotation for Uist is to have a period of two years cropped followed by two years fallow. The fallow is really important for things like breeding birds, they like to nest in the fallow, but it's also really important for botanical diversity, so that's the sheer numbers of different species of wildflower that actually grow in Macher. As well as being very rich in flowers, it's very, very rich in insect life, so it's full of food for them and their chicks. In terms of grazing the, the Macher areas, the cattle are really the preferred option. They take all the vegetation off, they don't differentiate between species, whereas sheep graze preferentially. Cattle will help create a more diverse sward. It's what we're looking for, really, with the macker.
creates a habitat that's fantastic and just basically unparalleled anywhere else in, in agriculture, I would say. We start cutting the grass silage 1st of August and then we start the, the corn in September. The reason that uh, we have cutting dates is really to benefit corn crakes. So corn crakes in the US have at least two broods a year. If we sort of harvest after the 1st of August, that second brood has usually hatched and is mobile, so can try and escape from the moors. Corn crakes used to live all over the UK and now they're really pushed to the outskirts. The reason that they're still doing okay here is because of crofting. So that basically means that we'll start cutting in the middle of the field and then work out towards the edges. You cut up and down and up and down from one side to the other. The reason for that is that the corn crakes will move away from the tractor into the vegetation that's still left and they'll carry on doing that till they get to the edge of the field and that way they'll escape. Whereas if you mow from the outside inwards, then they'll be trapped in the centre of the field and then possibly cut with that last cut. For the later cutting dates, uh, that's really to provide the corn crakes and their young with habitat to hide in while they're molting before they go off on migration. There's more cover basically for birds and there's also more ripe seed then as a feed source for them. And the other important thing for the cutting dates is that it allows the wildflowers to flower and set seed within the corn crop itself. But sometimes we have to cut it earlier because of the geese coming in and flattening the crops. The downside of that 1st of September date is obviously as goose numbers have increased in US over the years, it's become increasingly difficult for folk to hold off to that date because they're losing massive percentages of their crops with the geese coming in the flattening areas. We are very aware that there's a very delicate balance between getting the corn ripe for cutting and not letting the geese completely destroy it. There has to be a balance between the benefits for wildlife and the need to get a very high quality crop off for the crofters to feed the cows. The whole system has to work for both, otherwise it's just zoo keeping. Winter grazing is also really important for the, the macher, particularly cattle grazing. we graze it back and that makes sure that when it comes to spring again that we've got a nice fine place for these flowers to grow up through again. When we're feeding the silage, uh, birds get the seed on the ground and in their droppings. And that benefits the small birds. The things like twite, like linnet, can be seen in large flocks around the area and of course the corn bunting. Ensuring that crofting continues into the future is a certain way of ensuring that the macha remains as, as diverse as it is. It's really important, I think, that crofting and conservation move forward together to support each other with the benefits that we both need to see for wildlife and for the crofting community.